Hi everyone, this is Peter and Margaret greeting you from Israel in Jerusalem. Yes, we're doing very well and uh, we are healthy and strong and really just rejoicing in the Lord in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, we uh, have a friend staying with us. She actually came before all the restrictions began and so there's just the three of us. We've, uh, we're very much like the rest of you. We're in lockdown at the moment. Uh, we're not allowed out without we're wearing masks but again you're not supposed to go any more than 100 meters away from your home um, unless you're going to either the shops or to a, a chemist or something like that but generally speaking it's very strong the restrictions are very hard on us at the moment yeah. but we're very happy and still yeah. rejoicing yes <laughs> so i thought we'd give you a quick look around some part of the house and then a view from the balcony we're actually on the second floor of um a house and uh, there are actually three different uh, apartments in this section and uh, so we thought we'd give you a, a quick look round. This is the uh, staircase up to the other two floors in the house and then around to dining area, kitchen in the distance and then this is get ready for the bright sunshine here. We'll go out onto the balcony and have a little look and see just exactly our location. It's a lovely day today, but we actually haven't had very good weather. That's obviously looking down our street and is looking north towards the old city, which is about a mile from here to the, uh, to the Jaffa Gate. And as we pan round, that's looking roughly now west. And then coming round to right down that way is south and is towards Bethlehem which is about six miles from here that's the if you can see the road in the distance that's the Hebron Road well I'm sure we would all agree that we're living in such extraordinary times now something that well none of us as far as I'm aware have ever experienced anything like this uh, before and it uh, creates in us this uh, challenge to face these particular things. And of course, as believers, uh, we always want to face our challenges with the Lord Jesus and um, have him, give him the opportunity of working through us and um, glorifying his name in us. I was recalling an incident in the Old Testament where um, Jehoshaphat, the king, had received news that three armies were coming up from the south to uh, to attack Israel. And he, the, the Bible tells us he tore his clothes and he stood before the Lord. And he brought the people together and he said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And, you know, it's so true that uh, in this particular instant, you know, worldwide, people don't know what to do. We are probably uh, following the things that the um, the government or the people who are leading um, are telling us to what to do so that we um, have our social responsibility as well, of course. But, you know, it's even far greater than that, because going back to that story of uh, Jehoshaphat, that the Lord said to him, just rest upon me and this is what you're to do. The next morning, get together the army but also have all of the worshippers lead you. And they went out um, and they were told to head south, down towards Bethlehem and beyond direction. Uh, and when they came to this um, uh, valley, which they were actually right up high up, looking down into this valley, and they saw that the three armies had uh, annihilated each other. They'd all turned on one another and here they were, the uh, Israelites looking down on this, um, seeing that God had gone before them and done this amazing supernatural protection. And, you know, that's what we need as well, isn't it? You know, a supernatural care, protection that comes from the Lord. I would just love to, you know, the Lord to just say, as he said on the Sea of Galilee, stop and the the, the waves and the wind ceased. And that, you know, that that would happen with this virus, that God would say, stop. And people would see and know that it's him and that he would be glorified in all of this. 
Now, obviously, we need to follow the directives that were being given, and many of us are self-isolating, as has happened with us here. But, you know, these challenges, with every challenge comes the opportunity um, to, to see God operating in our lives. And uh, that's one of the things that we've been recently, we've been reading um, while we've been here, uh, from John's Gospel and then through into Acts. And we read a couple of chapters each day. The three of us get together. Some days we have communion together and a worship time. But actually what we do uh, as we read, um, we go through, and I'm, I'm reading aloud a couple of chapters. And as we go through, the Lord puts something on our hearts and we stop and we talk about it and we share it together. So it's been really very good and very encouraging. Uh, and... Um, in the readings we're doing at the moment, we're through um, the early part of uh, Romans. And this, apparently, according to the historians, uh, Romans was the first letter written by Paul to encourage and inspire the people. But when you think of the background that Paul's in, he'd just come um, several years earlier. He'd had this experience on the Damascus Road where God um, took a hold of him and said, you are going to be my apostle, and you're going to be my apostle to the nations, and in, in fact, particularly to the Gentile nations. And here Paul is writing this probably for the first time, and he is just um, flowing over with his enthusiasm for what God has done, because here the, the, the Jewish nation had been worshipping God for 2,000 years or something in that region, where they had... Um, uh, been following God's laws and God's particular ways. But as we know, that the law of God is intended to turn us towards him, not away from him, to turn us towards repentance and not uh, living in the lifestyle that we would like to live. But, you know, Jesus, of course, has come to fulfill the law. Or as somebody said once, he's come to fill full the law and make it complete and complete that law by saying to God, or rather God saying to us, you cannot possibly keep this law, but I'm going to give you a new thing. I am going to give you my presence within you permanently by my Holy Spirit. And so, you know, as I was saying before, with these, um, op with these challenges come opportunities for us. And one of the things we've been doing as we, we've been reading together um, in Romans, the, a, a word kept coming up. In fact, it came up over a couple of chapters within, on three different occasions. Um, and the word was because we've been reading in the Passion Translation and the three uh, occasions that this word came up, the word was cascade or cascading. And I just read you those verses that we uh, we we, um, we looked at. And uh, Paul says, Jesus is our Lord and Messiah. Through him, a joy-producing grace cascaded into us to empower us for his work. And the other one was, his gift of love and favour now cascade over us. A further verse, we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. And you know, I was thinking about this word cascading. Um, from a business point of view, we've often maybe heard the word cascading when it refers to um, a board of directors or uh, a CEO of a company uh, having policy decisions that they take. And these then, these decisions are passed down from the boardroom through to the uh, heads of management of the different departments and then from them down to the next level and so on. And so the the decisions made by those in authority uh, go down to the people who actually have to put those particular decisions into practice and bring a development in the company or progress in the company, whatever it happens to be. And uh, so that was what I was thinking. They, they use the word cascading for that information that comes down um, to the different levels. But also, of course, you couldn't help but uh, think of the word when you think of cascading of a waterfall. And as the waterfall comes uh, down, it uh, 
it hits the rocks and it splashes and it sprays and it spreads and the information or rather in this case the water spreads amongst um, the people and uh, I was uh, there was an illustration one time that I'd like to share with you and it was a um, a, a preacher who was and he, he showed the picture of uh, a man a really mu muscly man standing astride a well and um, he had this thick rope in his hands and he was pulling on the rope to raise the water out of the well and the beads of perspiration were breaking on his brow and his muscles were tensed and flexed and you could see that he was working hard to get the water up out of the well, the life-giving water. And actually the the guy who was preaching turned over the uh, picture that he was showing uh, that he'd been showing and on that picture it showed uh, a huge waterfall a bit like Niagara Falls and uh, a, a, a lady in a, a, a very slim slight lady in a, a flowing dress reaching out with a glass uh, into the waterfall to receive the water and of course he made the illustration or made the, the application that um, you know which of the two of them were getting everything that they wanted? Uh, well, of course, one side, of course, was the man straining on the rope. The human effort to try and receive some sort of blessing or understanding from God. But the other side, um, the woman just stretching forward and, and receiving everything she needed in terms of the amount of water. And so that was the illustration of cascading that I thought about. That it's really... Um, you know, it, God is abundant in his provision for us. And at, uh, on occasions such as this, where we are um, maybe self-isolating or having very little communication, certainly we can't meet together at fellowship at church. Um, but on these sorts of occasions, God says, I still want to cascade my love, my goodness, my blessings over you. And, you know, that's been an amazing thing for us here because even just the three of us and we we have do do have contacts and we're able to go out to the um to the shops to get food and the like but it's limited and even indeed some of our friends who live locally particularly some of the older people uh, we've been able to help look after them and margaret does baking for them and uh, i i go to the shops for them and things like that but you know it's this is part of our help to one another but god wants to provide us with such amazing um, cascaded blessings if you like God is a God of abundance and his desire is never to give in piecemeal or little bits here and a little bit there his desire is to pour over us uh, his blessings of um, well his blessings of care and protection his blessings of provision for us in each situation and even the blessing of his peace uh, in our situation it's not easy these times are not simple for us. We're having to uh, cope with something that is completely alien to us, and that is isolating from one another. But God hasn't been taken by surprise with all this. You know, worldwide, we can obviously see that uh, this has taken countries by surprise. Some have acted quicker than others, um, some who have acted hardly at all and are now actually suffering as a result of this. But the Lord knew all about it, and he has prepared his people. In fact, I often think about his preparation for us today is maybe for things in the future. You know, when we think of, think of, uh, and read of what things happening in Revelation, um, where, uh, you know, various plagues are released into the world, what will it be like then? I mean, this will be nothing compared to those days but is God preparing us well if he is he's certainly preparing us spiritually because God's desire for us always is that we grow in him and we it's a spiritual growth and development and of course he gives us the very strength we need it's his Holy Spirit who lives within us he desires to reveal himself to us in every situation and he always provides us with the strength that we need you know, it's a real blessing to know that our God watches over us. Sometimes it's difficult to 
feel that or to be aware of that. But as I said before, with these um, challenges come opportunities. And it's our opportunity to see him operating in our life. And of course, we then grow. We grow in our understanding of who he is. We grow in our, in our knowledge of the things he wants to do for us. He's told us he has plans for us. And those plans are not to harm us, but they're plans to prosper us and to develop us and to help us to grow. You know, it's so encouraging for each one of us to know that God has these plans and has these care, care over us, this protection for us. So we need to encourage one another with that. And, um, you know, it's uh, what I wanted to do is just read uh, a little section uh, to us from the Passion Bible. And it's in Romans, uh, Romans chapter five. Uh, and basically speaking about our new life. Uh, there's only a few verses, but I'd like also to just pause at, at little points and illustrate it with the fact of God cascading his grace and his goodness. So it begins chapter five and verse one. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us. And he now declares us as flawless in his eyes. You know, God's righteousness is a cascaded. It, it's vast. It's huge. And it comes to each one of us as a cascade from heaven over our hearts, over our lives, over our very situations and everything that we're involved in. So he, he, he his cascading of his righteousness to us. And this means we can now enjoy a true and lasting peace with God. Another cascade of God's peace. And of course, as often is said, peace isn't just an absence of war. Peace is that inner contentment of saying, Lord, I know you. I know you live in my life and I want to give you the opportunity to prove yourself to me. We're told in... Um, uh, Psalm 34 and verse 8, and in the, the authorised version, it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's saying, please give me an opportunity to prove my grace, my goodness, my love for you. And again, this is an opportunity for us to give him that opportunity. It's not that God needs uh, needs to prove himself to us. We need to prove our willingness to him, to receive from him everything that he has because you know we can know so much from his word but if we don't actually receive it into our lives if we don't receive his grace and his goodness and his power into us if we don't receive it so that we can operate it each day it actually won't mean a great deal it'll be words on a page and you know this is where i'm saying about the opportunity is to get these the words off the page into our hearts and get it operational in our daily lives, sharing everything that he has for us with one another as well at the same time. So let me continue reading there. Um, uh, verse two, our faith guarantees us permanent access. Um, and that permanent access is a cascade. It's not a little dribble or a drip. It's a permanent access. God was the first one to come up with the idea of 24-7, 365. You know, it's his plan to be permanently available to us. Heaven's doors are always open to us because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. So our faith guarantees us permanent access into his marvellous kindness. You know, that's another cascade of God's blessing, his marvellous kindness to us. He only ever wants the very best for us. You know, there are times when we go through trials and difficulties, but it's to help us to turn to, turn to the Lord and say, Lord, you're the only one that can get me through this. You are the one who provides the strength for me. What incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. An incredible joy he talks about and it bursts forth. You know, you can get Paul's uh, enthusiasm for this brand new revelation that he's received from God. He went away and he says, tells us he went into the wilderness uh, and spent time receiving this brand new revelation. It's what we call the New Testament. It's what we call the gospel. It's what we call a new and living relationship with the living God. And Paul actually He's so full of this. 
you pick it up, particularly in the Passion version where you pick up his enthusiasm and his joy and his uh, expression of this brand new thing that as God has revealed to us. It wasn't that Paul looked into the into God's word and, and drew all these things out for himself, a bit like the, the man astride the well, pulling on the rope. But rather, he went into the desert regions and God cascaded this amazing new revelation upon him that he's now sharing with each, with well, with the people in, in the letter to the Romans and, of course, inevitably sharing it with each one of us as well. So that's a real blessing. And, of course, what comes with cascading is that if you stand with a bucket under a waterfall, how long does it take to fill the bucket? <laughs> Seconds. And the bucket, what, overflows then. And so, therefore, with this same cascading comes that word of overflowing and that God wants each one of us to be overflowing in him, to be receiving from him that cascade of love, cascade of care and protection. And, and then he wants us to overflow. Why? Because he wants us to share it. This isn't something he wants us to keep for ourselves. How many pictures have you seen of Niagara Falls? And there are hundreds, sometimes thousands of people standing, looking at that water flowing over the, over the falls. It's there to be shared. And so it is with God's grace and God's love to share with one another. And I'm so pleased to have had this opportunity of, of sharing it with you too. And, uh, but just as we finish, let, let's just thank God together, shall we? Lord, we praise you that in your love, you have provided us with this amazing experience of you cascading upon us. So many different things. Lord, as we've learned a little more of who you are and what you have for us. Lord, we give you our praise and our thanks. And even in this time of difficulty, Lord, you still want to cascade things upon us. You want us to be protected and feel constantly loved and cared for by you. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your goodness to us. Thank you for the Lord Jesus, who means so much to us, who died on the cross that we might be not just forgiven, but that we might have the privilege of being called your children. Thank you, Lord, that as a family together, we can share in this wonderful grace, this wonderful love. And we thank you for it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks. It's been great being with you and um, hopefully we won't be too long before we see you again. Bye bye.